Is that okay? All right. Everybody is ready. Thanks for sharing, Emerald. I really appreciate that. And today is our class seven. We are on ACI three, chapter seven, on the nine stages of meditation. Today is the 24th of October. So again, welcome back. And it's good to see familiar faces again. Hi, Zane. You're early. Thanks for coming back. I never got the chance to ask you on the Zoom. Maybe another time. <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Richie. Hello. All right. I'm sure Raymond is there. <laughs> okay, let's just dive in. I would like to invite you to close your eyes. We want to start off with setting our motivation. So I would like to invite you to think of someone, someone who is going through some difficult moment or someone you would like to help. And we really hope that what we learn today will be used in some ways to help this person in a deep and ultimate way. And I would like you to think of uh, bringing our motivation higher of how what we learn is going to help us to become, to become a person, a being free of these impure parts, free of these impurities and become an enlightened being that will truly be able to help others in a deep and ultimate way. Because only through that, we can really help others. And so we have the short-term goal, and let's make that as an ultimate goal. Okay, so let's bring back here, your attention back here. <clears throat> Okay, let's come back. Hey, okay, I would like to somebody to help us to read the offering of the mandala. Is there anybody who have not recite the mandala? I think Raymond, Raymond, you have not, right? I say I keep you <laughs> in case if I couldn't get anybody, you are there. Thank you for being there. Thank you for your patience. So let me share the screen. So Raymond, kindly lead us on this offering of the mandala and then followed by the refuge. Okay. Uh, offering the mandala. Here is the great earth. Filled with the smell of incense, covered with a blanket of flowers, the great mountain, the four continents, wearing a jewel of the sun and moon. In my mind, I make them the paradise of a Buddha and offer it all to you. By this deed, may every living being experience the pure world. Idam Guru Ratna Mandalakan Niya Tayami refuge and the wish. I go for refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment. By the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every living being. I go for refuge to the Buddha, 
Dhamma and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment by the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest. May I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every living being. I go for refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha until I achieve enlightenment. By the power of the goodness that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of every living being. Thank you, Raymond. Hi, Isu. Glad that you're here. Okay, today we are going to learn Chapter 7 on the nine stages of um, meditation. I really like this one. I don't know whether you can see or not. It's very small. This is a wood block carving design by Trijang Rinpoche. Trijang Rinpoche within ACI1. Our Gershi Michaels teacher is Ken Rinpoche. Ken Rinpoche's teacher is Trijang Rinpoche. Trijang Rinpoche's teacher is Pabongka Rinpoche. So he designed this um, wood block carving to illustrate our meditation journey to illustrate our meditation journey. In the sense that um, our meditation journey is like taming the elephant. We are taming our mind. To illustrate it, you know, taming our mind is like taming the elephant. My teacher never taught me this. This one you can get from the reading because I'm very curious. I really love this. So I go and study on my own and I put the information, the pieces together. Okay, so all this information is from the reading and from Kashila's past teaching. Okay. So the elephant kind of like represent our mind. You can see the elephant represent our mind. Yeah, this is the bottom. Huh? The elephant represent our mind and the black Color represent the downness, the downness of our mind. Whereas the monkey, monkey stands for distraction. Our mind get distracted, distraction. Eh? Whereas the black color represent agitation. And you can also see some symbol like the flame. You represent the effort that you need eh? throughout the meditation journey. You can see that the flame getting smaller and smaller. This is today. Uh, I'm not going through this uh, the chart because this is not the the purpose for the class. Uh, they don't go into that detail. Just I'm curious, so I want to put the pieces of information together. But I just want to highlight to you. They start with the number. They correspond to like uh, the first will be you just put your mind on the block on the object. Sorry, the first thing that you do. You put your mind on the object when you meditate, right? And then you can see this person on the left hand holding the lasso. Remember we learned lasso? This is chapter 7, 6, 5. Yeah, chapter 5. We learn about the five problems of meditation. Problem number 2, we say losing the instruction means that we lost the object of meditation. So the lasso, be the sexy cow girl. So the lasso is the one, the trampa the drampa, to pull your mind back, okay? That is your tool. And the other one will be the session. The session that detect the problem. Beep, 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 that detect the problem. Okay, so this is your journey, uh, your meditation journey in your mind. <laughs> this is how your mind get more and more. You overcome the problems in your meditation. You can see that the elephant get you know, the black color get lesser and lesser and lesser.
then the elephant get white uh, overcome the downers they overcome the agitation okay so this is the thing that you can find from the reading I haven't do the quiz. I'll do the quiz after the class. I hope I remember. If I forget, please somebody remind me. Hmm. Send the picture to the chat group. It is in the reading. It is in the e reading. But if you want me to my one where I put all the information, I don't mind send to you, but you can check the reading. If you still need it, then only let me know. Because my one here, I already put all this information, the notes for me, for my own information. So that when you mention about which power, then I know, oh, this is the place here, this is the place here, you know. I like to put the information nicely so that I can easily uh, refer back. So you try to check the reading first, but if you can't get anything, then you come back to me. Okay? So we will start with the first one. The first stage is called Sam Jokpa. As you know, Sam is the mind, right? Sam is the mind. Jokpa means putting. So the first stage is Sam Jokpa. Which basically means that you just put your mind on the object of your meditation. You can see from here the dot, 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 dot. This is how our mind, we are, our mind is only just to able to put on the object, put one dot on it, then gone. <laughs> kind of that, like that way really. So how long, how long is that when you say put the mind on the object in meditation? How long in this stage one? Brief moment, so brief, maybe one dot, two dot, gone. You know, maybe just a few dots, then gone. You're able to, you're not really able to keep your mind on the object. Most of the time, your mind is elsewhere. So how long? For a very brief moment. And how can you hold your mind on the object? How? Through the power of learning the instructions. Through the power of learning the instructions. Again, through the power of learning the instruction for the meditation object from your teacher. That is how long the teacher gives you the instruction. You learn them. They put your mind on your breath. That's how long. Then you keep for a while. You know? For a brief moment only. For that short moment, you're receiving, you're able to put your mind on the object of your meditation based on receiving the instructions from your teacher. So you can imagine how short it is, isn't it? And at this stage, uh, basically you start to be aware like, hey, eh, how come up? Hey, I want to do, I'm supposed to meditate on this one. Then I go elsewhere. You start to be aware. You start to be aware. How come? Huh? How come like my mind uh like uh like worse than before? Actually, your mind is not worse than before. They always say it's just that we never knew we were not aware only. By now, we start to be aware. Oh, I cannot concentrate. I thought that I can do that. Apparently, I go and think about something else for so long. When the meditation finished, then only you realize, oh, okay, come back, finish. <laughs> So this is the stage one, okay? Stage one, beginners. When I first started, I'm like that. Okay, My mind gone somewhere else most of the time. Not most of the time, almost all the time. Then stage two, we improve a little bit. 
we can put our mind on an object. How long? With some continuity. With some continuity. So let's read this Tibetan word. Huh? Gyundu Jokpa. Gyundu Jokpa. Gyundu means in a stream. Jokpa, as usual, put your mind. You are able to put your mind for how long? In a stream with some continuity. Now you can see, if you can see the dot, huh? the hyphen huh? get a little bit longer. How long is that? They say it's about when you recite Om Mani Padme Home on one rosary, one round, one round, which is about one to two minutes. And how can you do that? Through the power of contemplating the instruction. What instruction? The instruction on the meditation object given by your teacher. So the first one is through the power of learning. You're learning the instruction. Second stage, through the power of contemplating, you're thinking about that. So it's longer already. You're thinking about that. Your teacher gives you the instruction and you're thinking about that. So your mind is able to stay on the object for some continuity. And then suddenly, the distractions come back. <laughs> okay? You're able to put your mind on some continuity. And then the distraction, shoo, search. You feel that way. Okay, so again, let me do a recap. Huh? For the first one, it's just so brief moment only. How long? Very brief moment. Second one, with some continuity. So both this stage one and stage two, your mind, most of the time, you are not on the object. Okay, so the distraction is very high. The period of the distraction is very long. Period of distraction is very long. Okay, Anna, so I want you to think about this stage one and two. Stage one and two for a moment. To think about that. Okay, you have the information in your mind. I would like to invite you to really spend about a minute to think about that. Okay. So let's do a recap in our mind. What is the difference between stage one and stage two? In terms of the, the time that you're on the object, right? The first one, so brief. Then the second one is some continuity. A little bit more continuity. How can you do that? Yeah, very good, Yisoo. The first one, because you learn 
from the power of learning the instruction, your teacher gives you instruction, so you meditate, your mind you put, say, put your mind like that, now do confession, you know. So you're able to put your mind through the power of learning the instruction. Then the second one, you're contemplating on the instruction. So it's longer. It takes about a rosary of the Om Mani Padme Hom, about one to two minutes. Yes, very good. The second one is like a stream. You have some continuity. So if you talk about the distraction, you can see that the first one, of course, you're, you're even more distracted. Your mind is even worse, right? Very far, you lose the object. You, you're out, totally out. Then the second one, slightly you get better. Okay, so that is the difference. Huh? So that those are the key things I want you to keep in mind. So now we go for the stage three. Stage three, lente chopa. Lente chopa. Lente means patch. Patch. Chopa means putting the mind on the object. So here they say patch like fixation. I like to think of it like my mind is on the object of the meditation and then I lost the object. I quickly patch it up. I'm able to quickly patch it up through the power of Drenpa. What is Drenpa? The one that, shoo, the cowboy, that bring back your mind. Okay? So for this stage three, you're able to quickly, you lose, lose your object of meditation and then you're able to quickly patch it up. Patch up. Okay? The moment you lost already very fast, you patch it up. So you have this, why you're able to patch it up quickly? Because of the power of your grandpa. So right now, your mind on the object, of course, will be fairly long time. You're able to quickly regain the stream. You lost the stream, regain back. You patch, patch, and patch back the, the gap. So the key thing that differentiate number two and number three would be your mind, of course, is longer. The stream is longer, correct or not? The stream is longer. The distraction, of course, is shorter and you're able to patch. You're able to, the key word is patch. You're able to patch the gap quickly. You're able to patch the hole quickly. Why you can do that? Stage three, you have this power of grandpa. The cup, cowboy. The sexy cowgirl, you're able to bring your mind back quickly. Okay, then number four. Huh? Nyewa Jekpa. Nyewa Jekpa. Nyewa is closely Jekpa. I think it's Jokpa. There should be mind where you place your mind on the object. I don't know the difference. Okay, it's put basically it means that you are able to put your mind, you're able to put it closely on the object. You're able to put your mind on the object closely. You follow very closely. Now you don't lose it, then you patch. Now you fail, follow very closely, very closely. So you have fixation. Stage four, you have fixation already. Again, now three, you still got a hole. You have the you have the hole, the gap. And when you have the gap, you quickly patch and patch and patch. Whereas number four, you follow very closely. I like to think of the dog. <laughs> follow very closely, very closely. Okay. So number four, you have fixation. Why you have fixation? Because your power of your grandpa is even stronger. You're able to follow very closely your grandpa. You are able to follow very closely on your object. So in this stage four, you have fixation. But do you have clarity or not? Do you have clarity or not? No. Your mind is, there's no clarity in your mind here. Okay? So you have, you have in stage four, you have obvious downness. 
Okay, you don't have clarity, huh? no clarity. You have obvious downers here. Okay, so three and four, how can you, why can you, how can you do, how can you reach stage three and four? Through the power of grandpa, bringing it back. Three, the hole is bigger. You patch, patch, patch. Four, you follow closely. Okay, you follow closely. So you have fixation, but you don't have clarity. Okay, you can lose your clarity here. You, here you can lose your clarity. So no need to mention about the nga. Definitely no nga. You know, no clarity. Definitely no nga here. Okay, I want you to take about a minute to think about the difference between three and four or one, two, three, four. If you could do a recap, that would be better. Okay. Now you want to tell me what is the difference or not? One, two, three, four. What is number one? Anybody want to tell me what is the difference between one and then two? Okay. You should say. Dot. Number one is like a dot. Yes. Through the power of learning the instruction from your teacher. Okay, so for a very brief moment only. Then number two, you have a stream already. You have some continuity. With some continuity. How long is that continuity? Like one rosary of home, many pet may home, about one to two minutes. Then you lost object again. Okay, that's a resurgent that you that resurgent. And then number three, you Lose the object, then you quickly patch, patch. You're able to patch the hole, patch the gap very fast. Why? Through the power of your grandpa. 
you're able to bring back patch. Your continuity, very good. Patch the gap quickly. Your continuity through the power of Drempa. Longer stream, very good, exactly. Number four, you have fixation, exactly. Your mind plays very closely on the object. It plays very closely through the power of your Drempa. So three and four is through the power of Drempa. Okay? So you can lose clarity or intensity, but you have fixation, correct. Your mind is not bright. Yes, you sum it up so well. Okay, so one, two, three, four, huh? Okay, yeah. When I when I learned this one, uh, when I learned this one, that's why I said you need time to stop and think about that. If not, you finish one to nine and you don't get a single thing. <laughs> so at least one to four, you have a strong, at least you get it very clearly first. Okay, so next one will be five. Fine. Dua. Dua Jepa. You need to say Dua. Anybody know what is Dua? I'm not a Tibetan scholar, but some of the words I hear long enough that I know naturally without learning. <laughs> so one of the, you know, trust me, you hear it long enough, you will know. Dua. Anybody want to, want to take a guess on this word? Where did we learn it? Where did we hear this word? ACI? ACI? Which level? <laughs> one. Yeah, Raven, you're right. ACI one on the teacher, right? I think the qualities of the teacher. Huh? Do one means to tame. And I remember the picture of the horse one, taming the horse. So do well. We are taming our own mind. Do well, Jepa means that we are taming our own mind. Now we are able to bring our mind under control. In stage five, you are able to bring your mind under control. What do you mean by that? You remember in stage four, what is our problem? We have obvious downers, isn't it? So if you're able to bring your mind under control, means that you're able to make your mind brighter. You're able to increase the clarity of your mind. Okay? So when you bring your mind under control, means that you overcome. Overcome what? What is the problem in stage four? Obvious? Eh, yeah, obvious downness. Obvious downness. Because you overcome the obvious downness, you are able to bring the mind under control. You bring your mind under control means that you overcome obvious downers through the power of session. So I make it easy for you to remember. Three and four through the power of Drenpa. Five and six through the power of session. Remember what is session? The alarm. The dee -dee 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 -dee, that one. So your session here is more developed. So you hear you overcome problem number four, obvious downers. You make your mind brighter already. So now you have, you have fixation, you have clarity, right? But do you have nga? No, you don't have nga. So you have subtle downers here. You still have subtle downers. Your session is very powerful. Your session detected that you have subtle downers. Yeah, your session, huh? It detected that you have subtle downers. Okay, and then stage six, Shiva, Jepa. Shiva, also we know the word Shiva, peace, Jepa, make it, which is making your mind peaceful. I like to say pacify the mind or quiet the mind. Quiet your mind, making your mind peaceful, calm. And you reach this stage huh, because of the power of your session to overcome and you overcome this subtle downness. What is the problem in stage five? Subtle downness. So in stage six, you reach this stage you reach this stage, no, no, no. number six. 
is because you overcome subtle downers. The earlier stage, stage number five, you still have subtle downers. So stage six, you overcome that problem and therefore you reach stage number six. And when you overcome subtle downers, they say when you overcome subtle downers, your downers are already down, 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 down. Remember, we learned in the previous class, number six, downers. When you overcome downers, you're trying to brighten your mind. Correct or not? You're trying to brighten your mind, right? Remember the three antidotes? How you brighten your mind? The first one, you, you notice that just within the few seconds, you quickly just brighten your mind. But if your mind don't want to listen, then you go for the second antidote. Yeah, you think about how lucky you are. You think about the benefits of, wow, you have this body chitta, what you're doing so incredible. But if you think too much on that, you have subtle agitation. So they say overcorrection because of the overcorrection of subtle downers you have this subtle agitation. So in this stage number six, your session detected that you have subtle agitation as a result of overcorrection or up, too much uplifting your mind or over, overcorrection of these subtle downers in stage five. Is it clear? So... In stage number six, because of the overcorrection of subtle downers in stage five, because of the antidote where you uplift your mind, you over uplift, you start to have this subtle agitation. And your session, through the power of your session, you detected the arrival of subtle agitation. What is subtle agitation? What is subtle agitation? I want to go to the quiz now, just at the right time. Okay? So that we don't continue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, until 9, then we forget everything. So we start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We pause for a while. We go for the quiz because we need to know what is subtle agitation. And that has to do with my quiz. Okay, question number one. Ishu, would you like help us to read question number one and lead us on this? Uh, yes, subtle downness is very dangerous. There are three responses. 100% of the people said because we didn't even know it's a problem because we think we are doing great in meditation. So the other two options is because it's difficult to overcome and the second one is because it is difficult to identify. Thank you. Why, well, all of you get the answer. Why well, all do you think the same answer? Why not difficult to identify? Could it be that it's difficult to identify? Could it be that it's difficult to overcome? <laughs> actually, it can be, but the answer is correct. I Actually, I also prefer the third one. We didn't really know that it's a problem. You can be a very great meditator. The teacher always say that uh, you have learned for many, many years. You can meditate for many, many, many years. You know, you can be very, very advanced. Yeah, but you didn't even know you got a problem. That's a problem. The greatest problem is you didn't even know that you have this problem because you're doing so great. It feels so good, you know. Yeah. When you say it's difficult to overcome, yes, maybe, yes, it is difficult to overcome. Uh, yes. When you say, can I say it's difficult to identify? Yes, it's difficult to identify. Maybe I didn't even know about that. But I think the answer would be uh, the greatest problem. They are all correct. Would be because we didn't even know it's a problem because it feels so good. And we think we are doing very well. 
Okay, thank you for that. And question two. Angela, would you like to read this? Oh, how to uplift, uplift our mind if we have subtle darkness? Uh, think of our death. Second, think of how rare and precious this life we have now. Think of suffering. So you, I want me to answer. Uh, answer it also, huh? What do you think? Uh, is it that? I think second one. Uh. Okay. Yeah, you want to uplift, huh? You down, down, down. You want to uplift. So you think about how rare, how precious this yeah. moment I have right now. Yeah. Yes. I have all the perfect circumstances within me and outside of me, the condition for me to practice. So let's just do it. Okay. And we always think, even myself, I'm struggling. We always think, that, ah, I will still have the time. Yeah, I will still have another this life. But because our teacher keep on reminding us that the chances to get this, and I mean, these circumstances, perfect circumstances, again, is so rare and precious. Perfect circumstances in the sense that maybe you say, no, I'm not happy. Yeah, it's perfect because you're not fully happy. You still have some problem. Right? That's why they say human life is the best. It's the best. And you have meet the perfect circumstance in the sense that you are sitting here. And I don't know, teacher always say you're like one in a million, you know, things like that. I say, wow, oh, I'm so precious. <laughs> so precious. Okay, so we get all this correct. Question three. Jenny, would you like to do this for us? Sure. All of this describes subtle agitation correctly except water running under the eyes, feeling sleepy, background noise. Um, all of this describes subtle agitation correctly, except that I think I go for feeling sleepy will be the will be my answer. You're right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So subtle agitation is like water running under the eyes. Okay, water running under the eyes means that like eyes very peaceful, isn't it? Like you're meditating, but there is some. Under it, there are some thoughts coming up, knocking on it, you know, like going to come out. But did they come out? No, it's very close. So I did mention about background noise, but it's quite similar to background noise. Yeah, you're still focused, you're still meditating, your mind is still clear, but there is some background noise. Yeah. So this is subtle agitation. While mentioning about this, I go and find for you subtle agitation because I get confused initially while I was studying this one. When I was a student, I asked my teacher, I don't remember they give me the answer. Maybe they did, you say. I'm really very confused on this part. I was okay with the rest except this one. So I went and studied and studied and studied and, find, and finally, I, and I heard Kashila's recording as well and I go and search on that. Subtle agitation, Kashila says, the first Panchen Lama says, you remember I said you overcome the subtle downness as you correct your subtle downness. When you overcorrect it, then it becomes subtle agitation. That is from the first Panchen Lama, where you're slightly distracted from the object. It's like the background noise, background noise, okay? The one knocking. But uh, did you lose the object? No. Huh? They're about to come out. They might come out anytime. You know, this is the eyes. The water running there, the tops there. But did they come up? No. Yeah? Okay. But if you did not manage, remember I said this, the eyes, right? Water running in, under the eyes, subtle agitation, as you over, because due to the over correction of subtle downers, you get this subtle agitation because you bring in the thought. Remember, you uplift your mind, you bring in the thoughts. But if you keep on bringing your thought more and more, you uplift, 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 over uplift, you have this subtle agitation, you didn't overcome this subtle agitation, they become gross agitation. Means that you lost, your mind wander off. You become a gross agitation. That is first panchen nama. 
Okay, the next uh, the next person, Pabongka Rinpoche, what he says about subtle agitation. This is from Pabongka Rinpoche. He says that for gross agitation is when you lose the object of your meditation. When you lose the object of your meditation, it's called, it's, it is called gross agitation. Pabongka Rinpoche. Eh? And then, uh, for subtle agitation, he says that it's water flowing under the eyes, like background noise, the, where the mind is on the object, but you feel that the mind is about to go to another object. You feel that you feel like the mind is about to go to another object. That is subtle agitation, according to Paponga Rinpoche. Okay, so roughly we get an idea of that. Well, what is that? What is that? Which one is that? You know, so I get confused on that. So you have to think about that. Okay. When I learned this class, I cannot remember honestly. I say, oh, they all sounds about the same. To be very honest, this class, uh, you need to meditate. From your meditation experience, you'll be able to understand better. Otherwise, it is like I cannot see any difference at all. Okay. But you can tidy up your notes. Tidy up your notes. At least you get the facts, information, right? Then while you're meditating, while you're meditating, sometimes you take note of that. I did never take note of all these things. Then after a while, then my teacher said, okay. Uh, okay. The teacher said, okay, when you meditate, I tell you what, you observe which stage are you. Then when I start to observe, because you get the notes already, right? Then you will know, oh, oh, I think I'm here. It's not like every time if you're at stage, for example, if you're at stage three, you're not always at stage three. You can go up and down, okay? Sometimes you're higher, at the higher stage. Sometimes you're at a lower stage. It feel that way for me. Okay, so now we are ready to go back to our subtle agitation. So just a recap. I hope you didn't forget five and six. <laughs> what is five and six? You want to do a summary of five and six? What is five? And what is six? You want to type in the chat? Five, okay, you overcome your gross downness in stage four. Very good, but you still have subtle downness. Very good, correct, Jenny. And number five, you bring your mind under control. Yeah, you bring your mind under control, number five, by overcoming your gross downness. Your session is so powerful you're also able to detect that you have subtle downers. In number five, you have subtle downers. Means that you have fixation, you have clarity, but you don't have nga here. Yeah, okay. Bring your mind under control is number one. Number five, huh? number six will be pacify the mind. Yes, KL. Number six is pacify the mind. You both put one, one, uh, show win, uh, like this. <laughs> Okay, so five is bring your mind under control and six is specify the mind. Okay, so number six, five and six is through the power of session. Remember, it's through the power of session. Huh? Three, four, power of grandpa. Five, six, power of session. You detect, you have, number six, you detect that you have subtle agitation. Why? Because you were overcoming your subtle downness in number five. And because of the overcorrection, you uplift your mind over correction. You have this subtle agitation. So I want you to kind of like tidy up your notes a bit. One to six if you can, or five and six.
Okay, you want to do a recap or not? Number one. What is number one again? Dot. Yeah, somebody said dot. Can I can see your mouth? Just a dot. You brief, very brief moment only. Through the power of learning the instruction from your teacher. Okay, most of the time you're distracted. You're there only for dot, 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 dot. Maybe a few dot, dot. Okay, most of the time you're not on the object through the power of learning the instruction. Two. So I can hear somebody say with some continuity. With some slightly more continuity. Like one minute to two minutes. One rosary of oh many pet me home. Through the power of contemplating the instruction. Because you contemplate, you think about that. So you're able to hold the object slightly longer with some uh, continuity. There's a stream, like Isu say with a stream. Okay, then three and four through the power of grandpa. So three, you are able to patch, patch, patch together. You, you, you realize that there's a gap. Very fast, you catch yourself. You patch, patch the hole and patch the hole. Yeah. So the stream is longer through the power of your grandpa. And number four, you're able to follow closely like the dog. <laughs> I the thing for the dog to help myself to remember. Follow very closely. So you're able, your mind, you're able to put your mind on the object very closely. You have fixation here. Number four, you have fixation already. Okay? You have fixation. But your, is your mind clear or not? Do you have clarity? No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. So you have this obvious downness. Down, 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 down. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Okay, ready. For me, when I learn this one, it's very difficult. If you look one to nine, ah, you sure cannot remember. you confused, I tell you. I don't remember it for years until I need to tidy up. And then I, need, I see. Every time I learn, I forget. Every time I learn, I forget. You know. So I, then I break them into parts. One to four. I hold it very strongly in my mind. So I, I, I don't want to remember. Five, six, I just tidy it. Put one side. I don't want to remember. One, two, three, four. I catch it. If I'm a beginner, I want to catch one, two, three, four closely. Okay, but since we're in a class, I'm sorry, we have to continue, okay? Like when I teach my, the, the other younger group, huh, we stop at four. Then we do some other thing, we talk about other thing, you know, for one class, then we repeat and repeat and repeat, repeat. Then we do five and six. Then we stop and talk about talk, 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 talk. Then only seven and eight, okay? So here I have to continue. So one to four, you hold close to you already. Then five and six, I like to put them together. When I learn, put five and six. Then I don't want to learn seven, eight, nine. Then I get confused. Five and six, they are together because they have some similarity. Okay, so five and six is through the power of session already. Remember, always connect, ah, huh? always connect, ah. Huh? Number four, you have the problem of obvious downness. Cry not, your mind is not bright, ma. Cry not, number four. Remember, you have fixation. You see, you follow closely, 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 but your mind is not bright. So you need to overcome this problem. So stage five, you overcome the problem of obvious. Downness, yeah. That's why we say you're able to control your mind. You control your mind. How you control your mind? Make your mind bright. Bright eye, bushy tail. You make your mind bright. So you overcome your obvious downness. So you have fixation. You have clarity. But do you have nah? No. Okay. Your session detected that you have subtle downness in number five. Okay, then how that lead to number six? Remember, you have subtle downness, you need to overcome this. Huh? When you reach six, it means that you already overcome subtle downness. That's why they call pacify the mind. Okay? You're not only control your mind, you pacify your mind. Okay, so six, you pacify your mind. You don't have subtle downness there. But because of the action of overcorrection, overcorrect it, you have this subtle agitation occurring. The background noise or the water running under the eyes. You have this subtle agitation. Your session detected that you have this subtle agitation. Did they come up? No, subtle agitation is that knocking only or pass by only. Okay.
Okay, five and six. Once you already learned five and six, you're quite okay. Then for me, I would want to go into seven and eight. Okay, seven. Nampa, Shiva, Jepa. Nampa, Shiva, Jepa. Nampa me totally. Shiva, just now we learned Shiva in number six. Shiva, peace. Jepa, make your mind. Means that you make your mind, you pacify your mind completely. Remember, number six, you pacify your mind only, right? Here, you pacify your mind totally, completely. Here, you, if you remember, we say we already overcome obvious downer, subtle downer. Now we already we want to overcome subtle agitation. That's why I say completely. Here, by now, uh, you almost completely stop sub all the downers and all the agitation. There's no more danger of downers and agitation. You can almost say that. Okay, sometimes your downers and agitation maybe once a while may come, may come up, uh, once a while. Uh, but I like to imagine the boxing, uh, you know the boxing? The moment they come up, right? The mind uh, box them. <laughs> Understand? Uh, by now you're so strong already. Okay? You see them come up, you, <laughs> you hit them. So here you don't have the danger of a uh, downness and agitation. But you require effort. This one, number seven, is through the power of effort. Okay, sorry, I stopped sharing already. Eh? Okay, so this one. Again, okay, seven. You pacify your mind completely in the sense that there is no more danger for agitation or downness. Remember earlier on, we already stopped the obvious downer, then we stopped the subtle downers, then we stopped the subtle agitation. Then, now we completely pacify the mind. Can they come up? Once in a while, maybe they come up. But the moment they come up, uh, you, you, you box them. You're so strong now. You, you hit them. <laughs> okay? So how can you reach this stage? Through the power of effort. You need effort. When you meditate, you need effort. Okay, Anna. Can you imagine the picture or not? Imagine the picture, huh? your mind is so strong now already. Okay, you know, dream by the station, you overcome all the problem already. So now you pacify the mind completely. Occasionally, maybe the subtle, the, no, sorry, the downness or the agitation, they just come in. Huh? They come in, want to kachow you, want to disturb you. Huh? But you already, psh, you hit them. Before they can kachow you, can disturb you, you already hit them. Psh. Okay, that's why we say you have almost completely stopped agitation and downness. This is only possible through the power of effort. You need effort throughout the meditation. Uh, teacher Reg, can I ask, what is recollection and watchfulness? Uh, watchfulness are total, I can understand. It's like the shishing is like immediately catch. Recollection means what? what uh? Okay, recollection is the drampa. There's are some of the words that uh, doesn't quite uh doesn't quite um, yeah recollection is the drampa. You remember the drampa? Uh, we say that we say that um, problem number two. We say problem number two is losing the object of meditation, right? And the antidote will be recollection. The recollection here just means that bring it back, bring your mind back. Bring your mind back. Okay? Watchfulness will be the session. The di -di 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 alarm. Okay, then stage eight. Stage eight and seven and eight is about the same. Just now remember seven, I say you need power. You need the power through the power effort. You need effort throughout the meditation. But number eight, you only need effort at the beginning. I should just so at the beginning. You need effort. Then after that, they cruise just they just um they just how to say cruise. They just cruise. Your meditation just cruise. 
You don't need effort anymore. Effortless. So a little effort at the beginning to stop your downness and agitation. And thereafter, you don't need it anymore. It's on cruise. Your meditation is on cruise. Just flow effortlessly. Here they say you reach Ting and Zin. Remember Ting and Zin or not? Do you remember Ting and Zin? We learn in chapter one. We say Ting and Zin is the all of them they say single pointed meditation, single pointed concentration, single pointed co focus. But I give you the example of the cat. Or say anybody, any being got Ting and Zin. Huh? Is the one the like the cat? Huh? Look at just outside the hole. The mouse hole will be, you know, that kind of concentration. All of us have when we watch TV, yeah, when we like something, we got this thing and zin. So eight, seven and eight, what is the difference? Seven, you need effort throughout the meditation to stop your downness and agitation. Because occasionally your downness and agitation might bug in, might come in, but you already box them. Okay, so that's why you say pacify your mind completely. But whereas number eight, you only need a little effort at the beginning. And thereafter, it's on cruise. A little effort to stop your downness and agitation. Then everything goes effortlessly, smooth. That is number eight. And number eight, you have this thing and zin. Your concentration, you've got this thing and zin concentration. Okay, so I want you to spend about a little bit of time to think about seven and eight, the difference between seven and eight. Okay. Okay, uh, so seven and eight, uh, oh, quite okay. Uh. So can you tell me what is different between seven and eight? Oh, very good issue. Effort against no effort. Um, one, you need effort throughout the thing. The other one, you cannot say no effort. Maybe you need a small effort at the beginning. Okay, seven, you need effort throughout the meditation. Number eight, you need the effort at the start. At the start of the meditation to stop your downness and ag agitation. Thereafter, you know, no effort. That's correct. Okay, very good. Wow. Let me check. Let's see. Wow, incredible how you do that. <laughs> Coming from my seats. <laughs> Yay, last one. Okay. Last one, stage nine. Nampa Jokpa. Nampa Jokpa. Nampa is even Jokpa. Place your mind on the object. Here, you are able to focus on the object completely and effortlessly. Again, I say you are able to focus on the object completely 
and effortless, effortlessly, 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 yes. <laughs> and as a result of that, you reach this physical and mental bliss. What is physical and mental bliss? Can somebody tell me? We learn there's one more word. What is this physical and mental bliss? Start with S. Anybody? To reach this physical and mental bliss. Xinjiang. Yeah, correct, Xinjiang. Okay, and then simultaneously, you reach this state of quietude. Remember, your mind has to be very quiet, very quiet, very quiet, and quietude. Huh? You reach this state of quietude. We call it the platform for you to see emptiness directly. That is the platform to see emptiness directly. So now you have the platform for you to see emptiness directly. We call it the first concentration level meditation platform. Uh, yeah. I want to ask a question. Did you see emptiness directly in stage nine? No. You should say no. You only reach that stage. Okay? You go into deep meditation and as a result of that, okay, you have this shamatha. Okay? You have this shamatha. Remember, shamatha is just a tool. It is a microscope. It's a tool. You use the tool to see emptiness directly. You don't just leave it there. Because at the end of the day, med deep meditation is just not to enjoy. Not just, oh, I feel so good. Oh, I feel so good. And then you come back to your samsaric world. You will still got problem. You will still eventually have to get old, get sick, and die. We want to use that to, for a higher goal. Doesn't mean that you don't have your worldly goal. You still get, you still feel peaceful. You feel good. You have a lot of energy. You achieve all your goal. Yes, things get better for you. But let's make that higher. Use that. They say when you reach that stage, lah, you use that, the tool, the microscope. I like to call it the microscope to go and investigate reality, which is the uh, shamatha is the stage, huh? Shamata is the microscope, the tool to investigate reality is the vipassana. They come together, the marriage of both. That is when you see emptiness directly. You want to see emptiness directly to investigate reality. Uh, teacher Sh Shavit, uh, can you, uh, Richard, uh, teacher Richard, can you repeat again? It said that you need shamata and vipassana. To see emptiness. So, shamatha is to single-pointed meditation. Eh? Shamatha yes. single-pointed mm -hmm. meditation. Then, shana is like... Analysis. The analysis. To uh, investigate the reality. Okay, you give me a minute. I am going to uh, explain further on this. Huh? Uh, okay. Okay, so... Um, for this one, stage nine, you reach a very, very deep meditation where you're able to focus on the object so completely and effortlessly that as a result of that, you reach this Xinjiang, like what Raymond say. At the same time, simultaneously, you reach this Shamata. Okay? You can, uh, you can, um, you reach this uh, platform for you to see emptiness directly. If you don't do anything, you don't see emptiness directly. But you can use that tool that you have, like a gongju, to see emptiness directly, which is to investigate reality. Why want to investigate reality? Because only true when you see emptiness directly, you will forever, you come out from there. That is the only way that you can stop your negative emotion permanently, full stop. No other way. Sometimes we learn the pen, we study, 
they can help us. Yes, they do. But sometimes we forget. <laughs> Many times people piss us off, then we start to get upset or we start to respond unkindly. Our pen story threw out of the kitchen already. Okay. Our two husbands in the kitchen also throw out the window. But when you see emptiness directly, they will really, it's like experiential. To me, I like, I, I, I feel that way that it will be like, you yourself experience that. Like nobody can tell you otherwise, you know. Mm. Yeah. So that is the only way that you can stop your negative emotion forever, permanently. You're on your way out of samsara, on your way out of these impurities, these impure parts that you've taken. Okay, let me finish a little bit more. Okay, so this one, wait now. I'm explaining this also on stage nine. Wait now. I have more on that I take from the reading. I want to read from the reading for you. Okay, this is the one. In stage eight, Number eight, uh, stage number eight, you fo your focus is an uninterrupted stream. Remember? At the beginning, a bit of effort. Then after that, uninterrupted stream. When you reach stage number nine, you are able to focus on the object completely and effortlessly. The one I mentioned, uh, you're able to focus on the object completely and effortlessly. And the final result of attaining this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one by one is that you reach an unshakable state of physical and mental meditative pleasure, the Xinjiang. Simultaneous to achieving this pleasure, you attain a state of quietude. A state of quietude. You need this state in order for you to see emptiness directly, which is taken in by the preparatory stage of the first concentration level. You reach the first concentration level, the meditative platform, to see emptiness directly. This first concentrated, first concentration level, I asked my teacher many times, it means that your concentration is at the first level of the form realm. Your concentration needs to be at that level, the state of quiet at that level, yeah, for you to see emptiness directly. Okay, I want to continue to read this important thing will be, then, after achieving quietude, you go on to meditate one-pointedly upon the profound worldview of the middle way, reaching a balance in your practice between the ability to analyze reality, vipassana, and the ability to hold your mind fixed in meditation, shamatha. Okay, now. So you need this both. Okay, I read the final one here. If you practice this instruction correctly, then you will gain the razor-sharp sword of wisdom, a form of one-pointed concentration where quietude and special insight, shamatha and vipassana and merit together. Then you can carry this mighty sword onto the field of battle and as time goes by, smash the two great obstacles. Coming out of that, remember, seeing emptiness directly, you are able to overcome what obstacle we learned before? The two obstacle. Obstacle number one, obstacle to your, you have this obstacle, bad thought obstacle. We call it bad thought obstacle, your mental affliction obstacle that stop you from reaching nirvana, the first level. Okay? If you are the medium scope practitioner. Okay? So if you are the higher scope practitioner, you have another obstacle. You reach that stage of nirvana, you go further, you have another obstacle to omniscient. Okay? So coming out of the seeing emptiness directly, that is, the, you have this thought to overcome these two obstacles. Okay, now, then if you overcome these or two obstacles, you reach this enlightened state where you have these four bodies, the Buddha, a body that will not die, a blissful body that we learn in ACI 1, the four bodies.
Okay, I want to read from that. Huh? So clarify, you have to think about that. Okay, all I can say is Shamata will be, you reach this very deep meditation, your mind must be quiet, just like you can imagine the lake. Huh? The lake, if the lake is not calm, you cannot see the reflection of the moon. So reaching that state of quietude where your concentration level, we call it, I mean, I asked my teacher, lah, your concentration level is at the first form, the form realm level one, first level of the form realm. You have to reach that level of concentration or you carry, or you can call it the meditative platform, the platform for you to see emptiness directly. So the shamatha is be to hold the object. You hold the object only. Okay? Whereas vipassana is analysis. You analyze. You see emptiness directly. You use that to see emptiness directly. And coming out of that, you're on your way out of samsara. Because otherwise, we can study, somehow we forget. Okay? But if you experience it yourself, you will, nobody can tell you otherwise. Okay? So the marriage of Shamatha and Vipassana. Okay, Angela? Okay. How come I uh, don't say, we say that we <clears throat> analyze the reality? So we are comparing with uh, real life, uh, real life problem, is it? Oh, not in that context. I think they have a specific uh, meaning for that. If you remember, we learned in ACI 1, chapter 5 on samsara, oh, no, on Nirvana, the definition for Nirvana. What is nirvana? Permanent cessation of uh, um, permanent uh, cessation of uh, all the mental afflictions, obstacles in their entirety due to individual analysis. So they have a specific technical term for that. It's not what we thought or I analyzed or I just analyzed. It's not like the individual analysis here referring to seeing emptiness directly and the realization of the four area truth. Very cheap, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to think about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. But at least you get your facts straight. You think about that. So your mind has to be very calm. We can imagine that if my mind is not so calm, then I cannot see the reflection of the moon. So when I reach this stage number nine, is when my mom, my, my mind is like the lake, eh? so calm and so peaceful, where I'm able to see emptiness directly. Yeah. Mm. Don't know when. <laughs> don't know when then I can reach that day. <laughs> Maybe not this time. <laughs> you never know. Maybe ding, I think miracle can happen. When miracle happen to you, then you start to like feel, you know, it's such an incredible feeling, you know, like, oh, I'm nowhere there. I don't know when I can reach that, you know. Oh. Just, just do it. You never know. Just let it be. Don't have to think when and all these things. Just do the right thing. And just let it be, you know. They will come. When it's time to come, they will come. Then you don't need to worry. No anxiety. No worry. Just, just, just do the right thing. And just try. You don't know which seat will open. Hmm? True, true. Yeah. Thank you. And, and they say, even you say seven lifetimes, you say very long. They say we have been here countless and countless and countless. So seven lifetimes is not long. When I say come, huh, so long now, you know. <laughs> you see, I say actually it's not long at all. So our way of looking at things is like so narrow, you know. This is what we see. So I have to break the ceiling. Uh, did you reach other questions? Yes, Jasleen. Okay. So we have actually finished all these nine stages, right? So then, because we have been doing meditations for a while already, then where are we supposed to start with this, like, stage one? Are we supposed to do the whole meditations, the seven preliminary first, then only we analyze these issues? Because... Where uh, get your question correct, that you're asking uh, where is... Which stage are you when comparing to these nine stages of meditation? Are you asking that question? It's no. Not of, mm -hmm. uh, okay. You see, uh, we can actually start to understand individually of all the stage from the beginning, okay? But 
can we actually to do it after the seven preliminary? Then only we analyze this as a review. Because you mean the homework question that they ask us to do? No, no, no. Because of you see, uh, our meditations, right? We have done for a while already, so we are not mm -hmm. very sure that where is our level. Okay, so how are we going to check based on this every uh, these nine stages? Okay, so these nine stages is like the thermometer. They give us the tool, yeah. And as we do our meditation, sometimes I also don't know. But after I do my meditation long enough, then I roughly have an idea which stage I am. When I first learn all these things, even I really don't know where am I. Even I study already, I really don't know because I got no awareness. Huh? You know, you're like struggling. You know, you're trying to keep yourself on that one. You know, and then you still want to know what is the problem and the antidote, you know, and all these things. Huh? You don't even know. And I don't know where is my stage. As you meditate long enough, you roughly can feel that, oh. So, like, if you ask yourself, you ask yourself, yesterday or during this period of time when I'm doing my meditation, which one am I? Guess which one am I? Yeah. Jenny said, it's a theory to check ourselves where we are in our practice. Yeah. You roughly say, am I like just one dot, then I'm gone? Ask yourself, am I just, when I'm doing my meditation assignment, you know, whatever meditation I'm doing, my practice in the morning, do my mind, is like just one dot, then gone? Brief moment only, a few dots, then gone? Or do I able to keep like for one or two minutes? You roughly ask yourself, you can come out and think about that. It's okay. I don't think during the meditation, I'm aware where am I and I don't care also. But my teacher gave me that assignment during my silent retreat that time. I was given that one and I'm more, I think that make a lot of difference because in a silent retreat, right? You don't talk. 10 days, imagine. Okay. Then you're so quiet. You got nothing else to do because you're not talking to anybody. You don't see anybody. You don't do anything. You don't read anything. You don't write anything. You kind of like your mind drawn inside. You can feel that, oh, at this stage, I think I'm at this level. Yeah. Jesslyn, maybe you can try, yeah. But I, I, my person, if you ask me, I would not stop and think, where am I? I? I wouldn't do that. I think if you compare, you weigh it, right? When you're doing your meditation, it's more important to do your meditation, right? Yeah. If let's say you're supposed to do an analytic prelim, preliminary, do analytical meditation, then we just do it. We don't have to purpose it. I don't have to stop which stage I am I, you know. And, and when you finish, you can roughly ask yourself, which stage am I, roughly? Yeah. I think I'm and maybe at uh, stage two, then I realize that after two minutes, I'm gone, you know, things like that. I bring back. Or maybe I feel that, yeah, I'm able to patch light. I'm like, I got this patch light uh, fixation that I'm able to really patch up very fast. Or say, oh, yeah, I'm actually on my meditation. I think I'm doing fairly good. I think I'm at stage four. I'm quite fairly good, but uh, it's quite dull. I don't think my mind is not clear. Yeah. Or maybe say, yeah, I think my mind is quite bright, but I still like, um, um, I don't have the nga. I don't feel the nga. Yeah. Then you feel I'm at stage five. You know, things, things like that, they give you like a barometer, like the tool. Yeah. Like Zane say, it's a tool or guideline only. Yeah. For our session to read. Yeah. It's very good. I like the way Zane put it. I run to read out. It is a tool or a guideline for our session to rate which level are we at when we caught something, All right? Yes. And it also depends on your how mindful you are. As time goes by, it becomes stronger and stronger. We roughly get an idea. So this is a guideline. So I say, oh, I feel that I am at this. Oh, I'm so like, uh, I, I need some effort, but I'm so strong. Wow, yeah, at level seven, you know, things like that. But I don't need it. I only, for a while, I want to sit down. I did need a bit of effort then, I just cruise. Wow, you're at level eight, you know? <laughs> I don't need any effort at all. I just sit down and the whole session, wow, then you're at level nine. Then don't remember to investigate reality, okay? Don't just sit there and meditate and come out. Don't do that. Don't waste the opportunity. So when we learn this one, they give us the knowledge, the guideline, the tool to use. Okay?
So think about that. I haven't finished. I got one or two slides. Mm, okay. You have any? You want you you want to ask on this? Yes, correct. Answer the question. Says that after the nine, right? You just cruise on, right? Mm. So you you did mention just now that don't forget to analyze. So meaning to say is that if let's say we are at a comfortable stage already, right? Then what do you mean by we want to analyze? Oh, because sorry about that. I want to take back that word. Because I said <laughs> like individual analysis, uh, like what Angela mentioned, right? It is not what we thought when I study. Uh, if I use my understanding of analysis, I will come to the same way like Angela and Jasleen. I have that problem also. Okay? So like I said, when I study AC, I realized from studying, I realized that when they mentioned the in when they say analyze, they don't really mean, okay, thanks. I got two minutes left. Somebody tell me, okay? It doesn't mean that I stop and analyze, you know? When you have this very calm, when you see emptiness directly, that is their technical definition of individual analysis. And you see emptiness and coming out of that, you have this individual analysis. It's like, you know, not like what we think. Okay, I'm not so calm. I go and analyze the thing. It's not in that way. Yeah, you think about that. If you still, you can come back uh, maybe later on. I, I finish this one. Okay. Now we come back to this one after I end the class. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to answer Isu's uh, question. Uh, say, how can I go back to review? ACI1, happy to pay for that. And what do homework after ACI300? Wow, that's great. Yeah, I really hope that you can go back to ACI1 to be very honest with that. I think that it helps you a lot. You can go to the ACI learning platform. You can purchase the course there. Or if you need, I can send you the link after the class later on. I can send you for your convenience if you want to. I can send you no problem. Okay. So I would like to do a dedication first, the ending, and then we can come back to further more questions. Huh? Okay. So I will invite you to close your eyes. I want you to be very, very happy that what we are doing, what we are doing is so powerful and so incredible. I want you to really, really be very happy with the goodness that you have collected. And I want you to recall your motivation. At the beginning of the class, what is our motivation? We got our short-term motivation and our ultimate motivation. Yeah. And so by the power of the goodness that we have just done, may all beings complete the collection of merit and wisdom and thus gain the two ultimate bodies that merit and wisdom make. So use three long exhale and to send out all this goodness to everybody, to share with everybody this goodness that we have collected and be very, very happy that we are here. And feel free to come back to your breath and open your eyes when you're ready. Hey, great. Finished on time. Thank you.